Okay, so you know how at the start of some videos you get that don't try this at home sign? Yeah, I might need to add that into this video. So the PlayStation 5 has now been out for 5 months and originally I wasn't really that fond of the design. It seemed a little too radical for my liking, almost alien-like in design in comparison to other consoles. But over time I've grown accustomed to it. In fact now I really like the design and I'm glad Sony decided to go in a completely different direction to Xbox's minimalist design, which I also like by the way. This way I get the best of both worlds. However the one issue I have currently with the PlayStation 5 is its all white design. You see I've gone for a very dark, moody, almost Batcave-like aesthetic for my gaming slash studio setup. By the way that studio video is coming very soon, I promise. And the PS5 stuck out like a sore thumb. So I decided that I'm going to paint the faceplate in a matte black finish. The purpose of this video really is to serve as a how-to guide. So I'll touch up on my process from start to finish, the paint I ended up using, the end results and also the mistakes I made along the way. Now I spent a lot of money on this video so I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on it. It really helps out a lot. Now before you start painting the plates you'll need to get it removed from the PS5. There's a ton of tutorials covering this process on YouTube but I thought I'd quickly show you how this is done. You'll mainly want to focus on the rear top corners of the console. From a top down view you can see that if you pull on the plate lightly the only thing holding it to the console is a small bracket. The corner pieces just snaps everything into position. So if we look at the front side of the console, you'll want to focus on the PlayStation logo, grabbing near it and pulling the plate outwards. You don't need to apply too much pressure here, because once it's lifted you simply slide the plate downwards, revealing the hook design. The same process is done with the rear of the console, again focusing on that top corner, so that's opposite the CD tray. Again lift ever so slightly and pull the plate down. Now before you move ahead, here's my first bit of advice. Take a cleaning cloth or an alcohol wipe and rub the plates down ensuring you get rid of any excess dirt on the plates itself. You'll find that if you skip this process the dirt will eventually get stuck into the paint when you apply the coat. Ok now with that done you're ready to start painting. So the paint I finally decided on was this matte black spray paint from Rust Oleum. I found the paint on Amazon and it literally has a ton of 5 star reviews. I also found another video by D Thomas where he uses the same paint and gets some fantastic results. I'll link that down in the description if you want to check that out. Right, mistake number one. Considering each coat of paint takes around 20 to 30 minutes to dry, I thought to myself instead of just placing the plates down on a piece of cardboard and turning them around every 30 minutes, why not just hang them on the clothing line? This way I'll have access to both plates front and back at the same time. It also means an even coat of paint applied to all surfaces, more importantly it consumes a lot less time. Now you can't really tell from the footage but it was actually quite a warm sunny day. However one thing I did not account for was the wind. This meant that the plates kept moving backwards and forwards when we were painting. It's not a deal breaker so as long as you hang up the plates on both sides. Before I continue it's well worth knowing that it's absolutely possible to get an excellent coverage of paint on your product outside. I've seen it done. However considering this was my first time spray painting anything, I would highly recommend you spray paint indoors and perhaps place your plates on a plastic wrap with perhaps some cardboard underneath. On to mistake number two. And this is more an issue due to a lack of inexperience on my part, but simply put, practice painting on some products. Spray painting is completely different to your conventional painting by brush. You've got different spray systems, different coverage methods and techniques. Not practicing on any product meant that I was simply pointing the can at the shell and pressing down on it hoping for an even coat of paint. So I started my first coat just going left and right and doing my best to ensure the first coat was entirely even. By the end of that coat though I noticed a fair bit of overspray which was leading to the paint dripping. And here's where I made another mistake. Do not, I repeat do not try to remove that paint with any cloth or any type of fabric because this will happen.
So yeah, what this leads to is a completely uneven coat of paint with tons of streaks all across the product. Now, in hindsight, it would have been better to use something dirt cheap like an alcohol hand sanitizer, or you can even buy an actual paint stripper which helps remove any unwanted or excess paint. But after this tragedy, I decided to let my friend take over the painting, and he did a much better job. By the end of the third coat, the end finish was actually looking pretty great. I made the mistake of not making a video, but I did take some pictures which I threw up on my Instagram. As you can see, the finish was actually really smooth, and whilst you could definitely see some areas where the paint was overlapping, I was pretty happy with the end product. But then I noticed one major problem. The front plate must have caught some dirt during the final coat, and you could easily see it. So I decided that I'll give the entire thing one more coat. However, I had run out of paint. Okay, mistake number four, and it's not that I bought a completely different paint. Not knowing that spray paints have a different release system was the issue. So I ended up finding the exact same paint down at my local screw fix, Rust-Oleum Matte Black. However, this was a trigger-based spray paint, meaning that the spray is pressure-based. Therefore, if you press down on the trigger really hard, the paint will come out in full force. Now, I didn't actually end up recording this final coat because I thought it would only take a couple of seconds to do. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of pressing the trigger too hard. And well, this is the finished product. Again, I foolishly tried to clean the abundant oversprayer paint with a fabric cloth, not learning my lesson from the day before. But in all honesty, I just couldn't save the product in any way. In fact, when you look at the product under the right lighting, you can see just how bad the final finish was. There's an added layer of dirt here as well that you can't really see in natural light. And therefore what I'm left with is this hideous shell covering what is otherwise a fantastic gaming console. So in conclusion, would I recommend you paint your PlayStation 5 console? Personally, I'd say no, but then again, if you have a spot indoors where you can paint and you have some experience using spray paint, then go ahead. But I always feel like if you paint yourself, you'll always be able to scrutinize it a little and pick out a mistake. Now you're probably wondering where that beautiful matte black PS5 was from the beginning of this video. Well actually it's been here this entire time. Let me introduce you to my matte black PS5. And no, this is not the D brand dark plates. This is actually from a company down here in the UK called Alt Cases. And next week I'll be reviewing this plate. For now, this PS5 needs a little bit more work before it's ready for its final unveiling. But for now, that wraps up this video. Guys, if you like this video, then please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I'll catch you all on the next video.